Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and friends beyond the binary. It's time for the uh, podcast that just, like I said, that sounded a bit like boys and Barry, not boys and girls and friends beyond the binary. And another part of my brain said, okay, what does that have to do with, uh, and I said, well, it just sounded like boys and Barry. Which is a hard, really hard one to say, word to say. Oh, were you going to say a hard word to smell? Because I love the smell. I don't even know what, uh, could we get back to this maybe during the intro? We'll have a boysenberry discussion. Uh, was there a boysenberry in the, in the, like in the, the uh, strawberry shortcake, uh, like a uh, universe? I don't know. Oh, why don't you know? Well, cause actually it's time to start a sleep podcast. It's time for sleep with me. The podcast that puts you to sleep. And I also want to remind you, don't forget to support one another and support yourselves. There's links in the show notes, uh, to organizations to help you with self care and, to help the members of our community, the black members of our community, because black lives matter. So check out our show notes. You can do that in any podcast app. Uh, and uh, here's a word from the sponsors that let me bring you this show twice a week. Uh, hey, everybody, it's Scoots. I don't know if you've ever uh, thought about becoming a patron and then changed your mind or decided, nah, I don't want to. I don't want to be a rebel with cause. I don't want to support a free podcast. I'd love to hear why. Uh, but I, I, you know, I think I have some pretty good reasons why you, maybe you could think about it if you're in a position to do so. If you're not, you know, this is an uncertain time. I'm just reaching out to the people that are in a place where you could afford an extra five, 10 or 20 bucks a month. So if you can't afford it, you get a lot out of the show. Uh, those are the basic reasons to consider becoming a patron. And you see only, only in the, only one or two out of every hundred listeners becomes a patron. Well, maybe, do, do you have what it takes to do that? Uh, do you listen to the podcast, uh, like five, six, seven nights a week? Do you listen to five, 10, 20, 30 episodes a week? Do you wait? Are you listening to the episodes on Sunday and Wednesday when they come out? Like you say, oh boy, do you love all intros? Do you want to listen to our exclusive patron only series that 10 and $20 patrons are getting? But particularly if you listen all night, the patron feed is just way more designed for that. Or if you consume a lot of sleep with me and you want more uh, selections or you want story only episodes or you want all intros. See if you have extra 10 or $20 a month in your budget and uh, go over to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron. Uh, you get something back, but really it's what you get on the inside that you can feel good about that you say, well, the podcast I rely on is going to be there when I need it and when thousands of other people need it too. Uh, so thank you so much, everybody. Uh, that's sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron. All right, everybody. It's uh, Scooter. I'm so excited to talk about tonight's sponsor, Air Doctor. This has been one of the best additions to my home, you know, because I like to think of my place as a safe oasis for myself and my family. But there's a lot of things that can interrupt that safe place. Like here in California, we have to think about the air quality. I live pretty close to the freeway. I personally have allergies. And then there's all the potential germs when something gets delivered or something. Somebody comes by the front door. And what I'm talking about is breathing clean air. And that's why I'm so excited to talk about our new partner, the Air Doctor Professional Air Purifier. And this thing is absolutely amazing. Americans spend 90% of our time indoors. And according to the EPA, indoor air can actually be 100 times more polluted than outdoor air. So now with this new stay-at-home normal, filtering out contaminants in our home is an important step we can take to boost our immunity and stay healthy. A professional quality HEPA air purifier is recommended by leading medical experts as an effective way to reduce airborne germs and viruses and protect your home. That's why airlines and hospitals use high-quality HEPA filters to keep their air safe and contaminant-free. Here's a few of the amazing features that make the Air Doctor professional quality. And not only that, it, it sets it apart from other air purifiers and it really makes me proud to recommend it. It has a medical-grade ultra-HEPA filter that captures 100% of particles at 0.003 microns in size. So that's 100 times more effective than ordinary HEPA filters. 
windows. And especially when this thing is running at night, you want the peace of mind that you're breathing clean air. The air doctor is powerful enough to circulate the air in a 400 square foot room six times per hour. It's independently tested to remove 99.9% of tested bacteria and viruses, plus virtually everything else, pollen, dust, dust mites, and smoke. And here in California, that's a big deal to me. And it has a bunch of different settings for its fans. It has different auto settings. It has four speeds that you can put on it manually. It has a night mode that turns off all the lights. So you can test all that out and see what works best for you. And I'm literally just scratching the surface of this amazing product. On the auto mode, it has an air quality sensor that monitors the air quality and then adjusts the fan speeds and the filtration to, to improve the quality of the air. And it also has a convenient indicator to let you know when it's time to replace the filters. And having the air doctor in our place, it, it, it lets me breathe better because it gives me peace of mind, which lets me breathe better, if you know what I'm saying. And I love setting it in the auto mode during the day so I can see it working. I can see the indicator light change. So whether I'm cooking or it's rush hour, I know I'm breathing fresh air. Now, the air doctor comes with a no questions asked 30 day money back guarantee. So if you don't love it, you could send it back for a refund. But it gets even better than that. Air Doctor is giving us an amazing discount. Just go to airdoctorpro.com and use the promo code SLEEP and you'll receive a 35% off discount. That's right, I said 35% off. But you only get the discount if you go to airdoctorpro.com and use the promo code SLEEP. That's A-I-R-D-O-C-T-O-R-P-R-O.com and use that promo code SLEEP and let me know when you're breathing easy. Thanks, everybody. All right, everybody, it's time for the Sleepy Supporter Zone, the one part of the podcast I need you to hear because it's where I celebrate the listeners who supported the sponsors. It gives me a chance to bring you this podcast twice a week. And I want to thank Freak Tet, who supported Daily Harvest, uh, shared with Daily Harvest and me on, uh, on Twitter. And I also want to thank the anonymous person who got a Helix mattress, uh, who said, oh, I didn't get you. They said they, said they sent an email to Helix and let them know they heard about him on the podcast. So please uh, be like the anonymous person who emailed Helix or Freak Tet, who supported Daily Harvest. Tag them, tag me in a social media post, especially companies like Daily Harvest, Helix. Uh, Sun Soil, Brooklyn, and, and make sure if you support the sponsors, let them know their partnership is valuable. Let them know you heard about them on the podcast and you appreciate the fact they help bring you the podcast that puts you to sleep. And then when you support them, let me know about it so I can try to thank you here on the Sleepy Supporter Zone. The second part of Sleepy Supporter Zone is you getting the support you need, whether it's uh, for self-care, mental health, uh, supporting the black members of our community, enacting internal and external change. Uh, links to resources will be in the show notes. Uh, the third part of the Sleepy Supporter Zone is something I support. And when you hear this, this is the tail end of our fundraiser uh, for the Waterwheel Foundation. And the Waterwheel Foundation, a great foundation, supports a lot of amazing organizations. If you still want to get in on it, just go to Sleep Me podcast.com slash water wheel and join me uh, and the other listeners who are supporting uh, the work they're doing and that is the end of the sleepy supporter zone which is now over oh mystery bard a lot of people help out on the show who are they chris posty poster song sounds like an earful wrote the theme song edits episodes too. carl w the legend also edits episodes kenny scotty and jennifer runner, 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 runner. Thanks, 
Thanks, Mystery Bard. I'm at Deer Scooter on Twitter and Instagram. That's where you can find me. And what do you say we slow it down and get on with the show? Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep? Well, welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do it with a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights, and press play. I'm going to do the rest. What I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you could set aside whatever's keeping you awake, whether it's uh, thoughts you're thinking about, so things on your mind, uh, like uh, from the past, present, or future, uh, feelings, any emotions that might be coming up for you uh, feeling-wise, or physical sensations you're feeling. So thoughts, feelings, physical sensations, maybe changes in schedule, work routine, or just other stuff. You know, it could be inside, it could be outside. It could be seasonal, or it could be situated. Whatever it is that's keeping you up, I'm here to take your mind off of that. And here's what I propose to do. I'm going to try to create a safe place where you could set all that aside. Like I said, I'm going to smooth it, I'm going to pat it, I'm going to rub it down, I'm going to say safe place. Uh, and then I'm going to smooth it and pat it and rub it down again and smooth and then smooth it out and then pat it. Uh, because that's what, that's what I do. Like, that's what, like, I don't have that level of bed routine, but if I did have, I'd say, well, could you smooth that and pat it, rub, like, shouldn't you pat it last, smooth it, pat it, rub it down, say safe place, smooth it out, then do a welcoming pat. Okay. Okay, then what do you, oh, then I'm, let's try to create, a, establish a safe place. Another technique I'm going to use, I'm going to send my voice across the deep, dark night. I'm going to use a lulling, soothing, creaky, dulcet tones, which is how my voice sounds, pointless meanders, superfluous tangents. I'm going to go off topic. I'm going to get mixed up uh, like you said like i said i'm gonna, sometimes my mixed up words be, like i realize those are, are real words like boysenberry which again is not spelled how i would think it to spell it uh and smell it i don't know what it also this is a fair question is a boys is that a real thing or is that one of the great corporate berries uh, that have been not um but i mean is it a corporate berry uh, I mean, I've heard of boysenberry pie, but I didn't know if it was like boysenberry pie. Like, uh, there's no berry, no berries are included in this pie, but it is delicious. And I say, well, it is delicious. Uh, uh, so we'll come back to that. But yeah, basically, here's the thing: if you're if you're a regular listener, thanks for coming back. So good to see you. Like, what should I do with your feet tonight? Okay. By the way, I like that. I like that. Uh, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I, I'm really impressed. Okay, do you want your feet in or okay, okay? What about one foot in, one foot out? Uh, what if I build a tent using your toes so for airflow? And then if you decide you want full, like, then you could just pull your feet back and the tent will close. Okay, yeah, or I could do it with this book here, and they could just kick the book right out of bed. And you could do, maybe that would be something uh, empowering. Maybe that could be a new thing we all do. You see, hold on, Scoots. I thought you were introduced. Okay, well, I'm just working with the new, usually I talk to the new listeners, but this is an idea for regular listeners. You say, okay, Scoots, this sounds like one of your wild ideas. It is. Uh, you take a book, uh, pro preferably a hardcover book, You probably not unabridged, but, you know, I'm thinking about something like one of those Reader's Digest uh, abridged uh, summaries of bu a bunch of books, because those are usually pretty sturdy. You know, or a Funk and Wagnalls encyclopedia. You know, we can't get enough of saying Funk and Wagnalls. Uh, and you t set it up like in a uh, A-frame a a situation. Parents went away on a week's vacation. Yeah, no, no, this is different. So at the foot of your bed, and then you use the hat A frame as a superstructure to tent the end of your blankets. Uh, then you could place your feet 
either on the air hole on the other side of the A-frame superstructure or on either side. You could decide. And what will that accomplish, Scoots? Well, one, airflow. Uh, two, th this is more important, actually, than the airflow. Gives you a feeling of control uh, and options. Okay, Scoots, tell me more. Well, okay, so one, you know, okay, the bed, like, depending on what's at the foot of your bed, I obviously got to think about that. Uh, because if I, when I have a guest, I don't have a guest room. And when I set up my guest bed, it's actually at the foot of my bed. So I couldn't do this if I had a guest laying, like, sleeping on a mattress on my floor. Uh, so just in case anybody's in that situation, so you so you have the 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 book there, the bed book, bed book uh, now available from the Sleep with Me store. It's an old book uh, that goes in your bed. It's a bed book. Uh, but so then you could say, okay, well, I, I like this. My feet, I, I like this feeling of airflow with my feet, or I can put my feet in. Like you could put your feet out. You could say, hey, Tozy Poos, you want to go look outside the out of the comfort and blanket? Go on down there. Peek around. See what you see. And then they could come back. Uh, but then you could also, for a couple different reasons, you could say, well, I prefer uh, to get my feet now fully enclosed in my comforter and blankets. You just kick that uh, the book out of there. Or it could be something symbolic or less than symbolic where you say, you know what, this book is, I'm fed up with this uh, airflow. And then you don't have to kick the book, you just push it forcefully out of your bed. Or it could be a way you could, do, like, release some other feelings. If you have a partner that's sound asleep and snoring, you could say this pushing, this, uh, like, uh, uh, forceful pushing of this book out of my bed symbolizes the strong feelings I feel, uh, and now I'm ready for bed. It could be one more part of your bedtime routine. So that's just an option I thought of just now. Now, if you're a new listener, holy moly, I'm late to the game already. A couple of things to know, which maybe you figured out. This is a podcast that barely ever gets to any points, doesn't go anywhere, but it kind of does. It takes forever to get there. So if you're new, try to barely pay me any attention. And I know that's hard when you're new. Like, you really have to learn that, oh, wait, he's serious. He doesn't want us to pay any barely attention. We could pay attention to him, but we don't need to. And if you try to pay too much attention to me, uh, that's when it's like it doesn't work out. Because they say, when is this show going to get started? Like, So just kind of loosely consume the podcast. Though this idea, I mean, like you might see me, you might see right through me. Uh, but for me, this this could be, I mean, this is a free idea that could work for everyone. I mean, this is groundbreaking stuff for me. Putting a book at the end of your bed. And it could be, you see, that's a free idea. You know, who else? Get, I don't I don't remember any of those other uh, famous inventors or, you know, astronomers or whatever, philosophers. Uh, maybe some of, the, some of them gave their ideas away. You see, well, Scoots, I don't know if you could put, really put your ideas. You can't put a price on them. Right. You mean that's a priceless idea? No. It's, it's just hard to put a price on that, the idea of putting a book at the end of your bed. So it's it's priceless. No, it's hard to price it. You'd say, well, it's a free idea. Yeah, maybe that's the right price. Uh, like, uh, okay, thanks. Oh, so barely pay any attention. So this is a pod, one of the few podcasts you don't really need to listen to. That's one thing. The second thing to know is that this isn't really a podcast to put you to sleep. I'm here to keep you company while you drift off, not really to put you to sleep. I'm here to be at your bedside and to take your mind off of stuff and just be here talking and while you fall asleep, like I'm gently walking at your side while you drift off. And that's kind of why the shows are about an hour. It gives you plenty of time to fall asleep. And then if you can't sleep, you know, I'm going to be here for you. I'm going to be here to the very end episode after episode. So if you can't sleep, I'm here too. Or if you wake up or whatever. So those are a couple of things to know. Now, the other things, if you're new, that can throw new listeners off, uh, 
it, or a few things to structure the show. Like, so listening to the show that throws people off right away. Uh, the idea that I'm here to put you to sleep and not really that throws people off, uh, Creaky dulcet tones and my inability to speak throw people off. So those are all natural reactions uh, because I think I forgot to say this podcast is definitely does not work for everybody. Not, I don't even think it works for the majority of people that listen to it for, for one to three times. Uh, but most regular listeners, which is a, a pretty big number of people, they said it took two or three tries. Now I listen every night or now I listen whenever I need it. Because I realized all the stuff, Scooch was serious when we said, don't listen to him. And it made sense when he said, well, your ideas aren't priceless, Scooch. They're just hard to price. Because uh, I don't do, like, what do you mean? Pre, like pre-disc, yeah, we don't know whether to discount. I'm not discounting your ideas. I'm just wondering what the discount we would put on your idea when we price it. Like how to build that in. Okay, that sounds familiar to other tangents I've been on. It so probably is, Scooch. Probably those were uh, hard to price, too. Uh, so, okay, so those are, oh, structure. That's the other thing that can throw new listeners off. So show starts off with a greeting. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and friends beyond the binary, so that you know you're welcome here. Uh, and ideally, I can maintain the, the rapport and trust I'm trying to build uh, to create a safe place, uh, though I don't always achieve that. I'm not perfect. That's what I'm striving to do, to do. So then there's business. Uh, so the business is about four to eight minutes long of me rambling. Even the business, I try to get to the point. I try to make that a little bit flashier because that's how we bring you the show twice a week. Then after that is uh, the intro, which is the intro is around from minute, like whatever, six to minute 20 or so. It could be from any of those minutes to any minutes in the, you know, but the intro is about 12 to 20 minutes, which we're already like uh, probably 12 minutes into it. So we're going to be longer than 12 minutes tonight of me trying to introduce a podcast 800, 900 times I've tried to do it and not successfully summed it up because uh, it's hard to price. It's hard to describe but the other thing for the regular listener is the intro is part of the show. It's part of their wind down routine. Uh, the whole thing is to ease you off into bedtime. So some people start listening as they're getting ready for bed and they're doing their wind down routine. Some people listen when they're in bed. Some people are listening during the day while they're working or whatever, when you need a break. Uh, but the idea is the intro slowly gives you some space uh, from the day and, uh, like, starts to relax you or, or distract you. And then we'll go into a bit. Then there's business after the intro. And then I'll do our our seasonal series, uh, episodically modular series, uh, Otter Things. So that's the structure of, and then, oh, then there's some thank yous. So, so that's the structure of the show. And then, yeah, some listeners skip the end. Like 2% of listeners start the show around 20 minutes. Then another like 2 two or 3% of listeners, maybe up to 5, set a sleep timer for 30, 45, or, or 60 minutes. Some people listen all night, though I don't know if the, the this version is the best. Like the Patreon versions are a little bit better to listen to all night. But so that's, you could kind of discover how you're going to consume the show. Like uh, at first, just see how it goes. Like most listeners said, it didn't work the first time, didn't work the second time. I was skeptical. Then I realized uh, I was skeptical for like, it's like, oh, my skepticism was, was paid off. For once, my skepticism paid off because I was skeptical and doubtful. And then I fell asleep. So that's it. I guess I was going to talk about boysenberries because uh, I've heard that like term, and, and you'd think it would have an O I in there, but I think it's like a Y B O Y or something, N E S or E N S uh, boysenberry. But I always feel like a boysenberry is like a marketing berry, or like I said, a corporate berry. And then it makes me think of strawberry shortcake because she ran with a lot of berry based creatures or beings. Uh, so I don't know if there was a boysenberry. 
But, you know, I always think of, like, uh, the B- Bel Biv DeVoe song. So I would just try to say, well, Boysenberry rhymes with that. They're one of their more popular songs, but not spelled the same. So normally I would try to spell it B-O-I, because then I'd say da 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 in full effect. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Let me try to spell it. Uh, listener, I must warn you that I can't spell uh, B. Oh, uh, you know, so that, that's how I, that's normally how I spell everything. Uh, but so where was I? Oh, so I'm not exactly sure. I mean, sure, I'll get messages after this. Oh, yeah, boys and berries are real thing. I say, well, okay, in my mind, it looks like somewhere. And here's one thing you need to know about me. I prefer, I'm not a, like, I'll eat raspberries, but I'm much more of a blackberry uh, or those type of, uh, the, that side of the berry family. I, I appreciate a raspberry, uh, but I don't know. Like, I think because I picked berries, you know, as a kid, uh, there was uh, some pricker bushes we had access to, and so we would pick those and eat those. So, I don't know. Then I always think of, like, those, like, more wild blackberry-type berries. So I don't know if which boysenberry, if a boysenberry is, like, either one of those. I mean, you know, you should know also, I'm a big pie, I'm, I love pies, holy, holy pie fan. Put me, you know, hold, 3.14, hold the phone because, you know, uh, I'll have 3.14 pieces of pie. Make one cold, make one for breakfast, and, and a la mo- one with whipped cream, one with a la mode. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so I don't know where, where my point was there either. Oh, boy. Uh, but yeah, so I guess here's the thing. The reason I make this show is because you deserve a good night's sleep. You deserve a place of respite. And ideally, whether it's this podcast or something else, you do serve something that makes bedtime less stressful and maybe something you can feel neutral about or look forward to. And I hope the show can provide it, but I know it doesn't provide it for everybody. So if you, if it doesn't, I hope you find something that works, uh, the other reason I make this show is because I've been there. I know how it feels in the deep, dark night, tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep. Uh, so I just want to help because I know how it feels. Um, and I know it feels L-O-N-L-E-Y sometimes for me. Or frustrating or whatever other words you would, like I can't spell. Uh, or boysenberry. I can't say boysenberry because that's too many... Anyway, so I'm here. I appreciate you coming by and checking this show out. Uh, I work really hard. I yearn and I strive. I really want to help you fall asleep. And here's a couple of ways we're able to bring this podcast uh, free on a regular basis. Hey, parents, I want to talk to you about our sponsor, KiwiCo. You may be in a place where you're not sure if summer vacation started or if it never ended. But I want you to imagine for a second if there was a way you could get all of the best parts of science camp and art camp delivered right to your home for you and your child every single month. My daughter and I just made terrazzo clay organizers. I'm holding the maker's guide right in my hand. It comes with this beautiful full-color guide. Not only does it have how-tos, it has the history of terrazzo and links to step-by-step videos. So it makes it so easy to get started, and it keeps your kid involved. If you have a kid in your life, you really need to sign up for KiwiCo. I mean, imagine it coming up in uh, September, October, November, having a project you could work on. Everything's there, all the instructions, all the parts and pieces, it's all laid out. So instead of being in a role of an educator at this point, you're in the role of a collaborator, a partner, working with your child or just watching them work and being amazed and proud. So I don't know if that appeals to you or if there's kids in the audience, you know, tell the adults in your life uh, you want super cool, hands-on art and science projects delivered right to your door every single month. And believe me, you'll know when that crate is coming. You'll be like, wait a second, did the KiwiCo crate come yet? Did, did, is the KiwiCo crate there? 
Hey, did, did the Kiwi Co? Did you check? Did you check outside the Kiwi Co crate out there? There's different crates for kids of all ages. There's something for every kid on your list. Whether it's the Panda crate for the youngest or the Doodle Tinker and Eureka crates that are really great for teens and tweens. And it's easy to pause or cancel at any time. There's no commitment. Kiwi Co is redefining play with hands-on projects that build confidence, creativity, and critical thinking skills. There's something for every kid or kid at heart at Kiwi Co. Get your first month free on select crates at KiwiCo.com slash sleep. Right, Mystery Bard? KiwiCo, KiwiCo, a KiwiCo sleep is a promo code for KiwiCo. KiwiCo, KiwiCo, a KiwiCo sleep is a promo code for KiwiCo. Right, that's K-I-W-I-C-O dot com slash sleep. And think about it. Do you have a kid in your life? Do you have a neighbor, a niece, a nephew, a grandchild? And think about creating some treasured memories uh, with KiwiCo. Thanks, everybody. Uh, hey, everybody, it's Scoots here. And I know this isn't an easy time for everybody, but I wanted to let you know this podcast is going to continue to be coming out on uh, Sunday and Wednesday nights. So ideally, the podcast uh, stays a place so that you can rely on uh, whenever you need it. But I do want to ask those of you that are in a position to do so uh, to think about supporting the show. And you could do that at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron. I mean, the main reason that patrons say they support the show is because it feels good. They know they get a lot of value out of the podcast. And they're proud to support the work that goes into the show that puts them to sleep. And they get so much out of. And that's pretty rebellious. It's actually like countercultural to support a free podcast because you get something out of it. So if you do have an extra 10 bucks in your monthly budget or 20 bucks in your budget, uh, consider becoming a patron. Now, some of you might be like, well, what really is in it for me? Well, $10 and up patrons get uh, two all intro episodes a month. So that's one reason if you're a fan of all intros. If you just want to get to the stories or you don't like any of uh, the singing in the podcast, $5 and up patrons get story only episodes every week and they get jingle ad free episodes every week. Uh, and the main reason to become a patron is if you listen on a regular basis and you rely on the show, or especially if you listen all night. So just ask yourself, how many times do you listen to Sleep With Me a month compared to other things you pay for on a monthly basis? And then only if you're in a position to do so, uh, go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron. One other reason to do so, though, is uh, that now we have an exclusive show. It's only available to 10 and $20 patrons. It's an exclusive behind-the-scenes look. It's still sleepy at, at the making of odder things and this is just something really cool you say wait a second I'm, I'm the only one that gets to listen to this and it's sleepy and i get a deeper look into the process of making the show so one more reason to think about becoming a patron at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron all right everybody it's time for our uh, episodically modular with slight touch of seriality series uh, that's produced uh, not here but elsewhere it's a historical account uh, I was ma- able to maintain, or maintain, acquire. Uh, I was gifted. It was sent to me uh, by uh, someone so wise that I'm turning the show right over to them. Uh, without further ado, I'd like to turn the show over to Emma Otter. Hi, hi everybody. This is Emma Otter. Uh, I'm an otter named Emma. And I'm recording a series of, uh, like, accountings of uh, something that happened in my town, uh, some things that were very odd, and uh, that I call uh, the odder things that happened in my, you know, it's in my, like, it's not in a diary, though. Because uh, to me, the, you know, no offense, but you say, oh, Emma has a diary. And I say, no, no, this is a, like, a, like, a, I'm a, like a, I'm a budding journalist, I'd say audio journalist ideally so just just so you know but but so uh, i'm i'm otter nice to meet you uh, i live in a town in a swamp uh, like a smaller a smaller town not a small city but a town and you know we live in the greater swamp area like you may be familiar with some of the bigger cities like henson town and river bottom Uh, But we're out on the edge. You know, in three directions is the greater swamp area uh, that we know of. And then uh, in one direction, we're right up against the border of the place beyond the swamp uh, where we're not allowed to go. 
And it, it, there is things beyond there. You know, I haven't been beyond there, but uh, th- there is a thing called the Visitor Center and a bog walk, and it's uh, separated from the swamp by a road with a tunnel. And there's m- mysterious, like, vehicles without drivers. That's giant vehicles that sometimes go on the road. And we do know that uh, uh, the head of our resource, or community resource department, uh, Leon, the bullfrog, who is also an important member of our community, has been there. Uh, mostly asking, oh, to get to my, to get to me. So I'm Emma Otter. And I'm in middle school. I have uh, a family, my mom, my dad, my sibling, and then my older brother, Tefe. He's in high school. And he kind of knows everything and knows everybody and has the best. To, he says, I'm the smoothest daughter, you know, that ever was. But I also have three friends, all, you know, all who could consider themselves my best friend. Or maybe now I guess I have four friends. Um, and, you know, they know where, you know, wherever they hold in their heart that they are and I am in our friendship, they're correct. And I'll describe them in no particular order. So I have uh, some friends. Uh, I have a friend, Elijah, that I, I call LJ. Another friend, Vaughn, that I call V. Sometimes, and then uh, uh, my, my, my friend named Willow, uh, and we have our new friend that we met recently, uh, Billy. And w- when we met Billy was when one, we played this game, a role-playing game called Bards and Bunnies, and one night after we played, Willow went home, but Willow went on a, a journey and I'll tell you in telling you these stories that in the end, all will be well. Things will be odd, but things will be, because, just because things are odd doesn't mean they're well at the same time. So all will be well, even when things feel and seem, or you say factually, they are odd. So I want you to know that as well. So where was I? Uh... Oh, so Willow, when we, we said we had been told Willow went to the big city and recorded an album, and they'd even discovered some discarded copies of Willow's album, uh, which, you know, Willow is in middle school. There are, you know, successful middle school musicians across the swamp, greater swamp area. But it was kind of surprising because Willow hadn't told us about it. And then the album, a lot of the songs in the album – passively aggressively or directly kind of made fun of our town and the people in it including our us me and, my, and our friends so we were disappointed we also felt like well this is odd this isn't like emma at the same time before we knew about the album we were looking for emma because we thought you know with the lore of the big bunnies that maybe emma got caught up with a big bunny type thing and we went and looked for Emma, and that's when we met Billy, who's a bit being like a bit like a beaver, but with a duck's bill, uh, more or less. But I say, well, that's a giant. It's a pretty big bill, but it's like a like right size for Billy. We also learned that Billy has powers, the power of kind of like singing from within her bill or her throat, and then to active singing. Much like in the game Bards and Big Bunnies, she has magical or superpowers or some sort of uh, energy-based power that's beyond our understanding. And when she th- sings, she can make time slow down, she can move objects, she can inc- amplify uh, songs and kind of communicate, because uh, that's kind of where we found out last week that uh, actually... Uh, Willow was somewhere, wasn't gone to sell an album, which we had thought, but was somewhere and kind of needed us to come help uh, help her uh, keep all as well. She was involved in some sort of odd uh, confluence of events. And uh, like uh, we said, Billy, do you know, because Billy had contacted her through a tape, tape player playing backwards, but we'll get to that. We said, Billy, do you know where... Uh, Willow is. 
Meanwhile, now Willow has a family. She has her mother, Frances, and her sister, Dari. And Frances at first said, well, I don't understand why my daughter would move away and start a music career without informing me first. While that seems normal for some teens or preteens, it doesn't seem like Willow. And she refused to believe it. Even when they showed her, they said, well, this is the album she recorded. Uh, It was discarded. They played something that supposedly sounded like her. Uh, It was a song she had sung in a talent show. Uh, But Frances just refused to believe it. And then she had thought she had been in contact with Willow uh, through some uh, wind chimes, because she's a bespoke wind chime maker. She also had commercially made wind chimes. And uh, Frances had become pretty convinced that she was in contact with Willow and that there was big bunnies around and that maybe a big bunny uh, was having, and this is maybe the conclusion we had, that Willow was with a big bunny in a recreation of our town. There's maybe a smaller, smaller size down or something. Anyway, but at this point, uh, Francis is really starting to wonder, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe uh, Willow did move away and start a music career. Uh, Dari, Willow's older sister, is also uh, trying to help her mom, trying to manage. She, she also has a friend, Babs, that her and Tefe had gone with. And then now Babs has moved away, apparently. So Dari's like, oh, there is something odd going on here. But I just wanted to catch up. I'll catch up on more. But if you've never listened to one of my audio broadcasts before, that's fine. You can listen to these in any order. That While there is a seriality, I make sure to catch you up on the seriality so that you can listen in an episodically modular way. So I'm happy to be here, and I'm also happy to introduce, you know, maybe our most famous resident. Also to remind you, all will be well. All will be well. Uh, But when you hear this voice, uh, you know everything will be well. It's uh, uh, Mr. Antonio Banderas. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. uh, Thank you, everyone. As the ladies, the gentlemen, the boys, the girls, the friends beyond the binary, everyone in the greater swamp area, it's time for Otter. Things splish, splash. Wow, thank you, Antonio. Thank you so much. Uh, and I look forward to playing a uh, uh, game with you later. Thanks so much. And this is uh, Otter Things, and I'm Emma Otter reporting. And when I last uh, talked to you, uh, like uh, we had, it was in, it was the evening, and uh, Leon, our head of community resources, had just headed a, like a, he had just slowly put together. Well, there's something odd going on beyond the swamp. They're not telling us everything about Willow. I think they know something. Then the discovery of the albums for Willow. Everything tr- tried to like fit together too well, and it was odd. You know, the, the Leon Scott said it was odd. And Leon eventually discovered that uh, through through a series of deduction and intuition and investigation that uh, the Willow's albums were fakes, uh, that there was no music on the albums, that the only music was on one uh, thing, and it was just a like a, a, a like changed version of the recording of Emma at a, a, a like years ago. I think they call it auto auto tune or something. Uh, and that, uh, like that, uh, uh, that it was just a recording of Emma from, uh, like, a, a, what do you call those things? Show and tell, uh, a, a, a perf- talent show. How come they don't have journalism? How come you can't do, if, if you're listening and you're a kid out there in the greater swamp area or someplace beyond the swamp, uh, maybe do some journalism as a talent, ta- for a talent show. People may not like it, uh, but they'll appreciate it one day. Or that's what I keep telling myself. But so Leon had realized, okay, there's something odd here. There's something going on in the place beyond the swamp uh, after the bog walk in the visitor center. 
and I think they're connected. Why would anybody else fake it? So Leon snuck in, uh, first snuck across the road to the place beyond the swamp, but then uh, actually swam next to the bog walk instead of walking on the bog walk, which led to the visitor center and waited until some people were leaving work because people work in the visitor center. It's some sort of uh, greater swamp community resource authority thing uh, going on there. And so Leon snuck into the building, and the first floor looks like not like a it's kind of a rundown area, like a cover. And then snuck down a few levels, which again, each level got a little bit more polished and a little bit more. But even the third level down was still a cover, at least to, to Leon, who said, "Okay, well, this is looking like an office where they do basic studies of swamp, greater swamp area." And bird call analysis or, you know, anything. He said, okay, well, uh, but it, then Leon saw that there was like a, a like a, a, like a stretching room that stretched downward. And he said, okay, I got to sneak in there. But it is, Leon was trying to sneak in. He realized that the door was like, like it had a, like it needed a key. And then the head of uh, the the like the, the people that watch over access to the visitor center said, "Hello, hello, Leon. You're not mighty late at night to be wandering around our visitor center." And he was with some assistants, and uh, Leon said, "Oh yeah, you're right." Uh, um, and then they went back and forth, and Leon was trying to play. Well, you know, I just I left my uh, hat somewhere or something. And then Leon looked it down. And meanwhile, now, while Leon was talking, he was making eye contact with everyone. But at the same time, and this is that you could use this maybe if you need it, Leon was untying Leon's shoes with his heels. Uh, and then he said, okay, well, might as well, where, where, you need to escort me out of here. Oh, my shoes are untied. And here in our, our town, maybe the greater swamp, we have this thing called uh, everybody ties your shoes or reties your shoes. It's just something we are taught as kids. Uh, if one person's shoes untied, and it's a part of community building, but it's also a smart thing. You say, okay, untie and tie your shoes. And uh, everybody that's ever lived, like uh, that we know of, says, oh, okay. So Leon said, oh, even adults. So even it seems like childish to maybe someone that doesn't live here, but you say, oh, everyone does it. Uh, so Leon said, oh, we got to stop, stop and tie our shoes. And since it's my fault, uh, I'll tie your shoes. And this is kind of something different from town to town. And Leon said, you know, I'm a, I'm a civil servant. And, you you know, I, I've like, you know, so they said, all right. Uh, in our area, this would not seem like an odder thing to have another adult tie your shoes or to stop and untie and tie your shoes. And Leon said, did you, did you know, like, he's very good at casual conversation. So he said, did you know I was, like, I'm the fastest shoe tire? Do you remember? And actually one of them said, oh, yeah, you were on the high school shoe tying team. And so Leon started trying to, he goes, yeah, I'll speed tie your shoes. You, don't, you won't even be able to see my hands moving. Now, meanwhile, what Leon did is, like, tied all their shoes together uh, and then as he was doing that in like their ankles and everything, he tied his shoes too for real and then grabbed the keys off of the key band, you know, the key holster from the person and then ran and unlocked the, the, the stretching room. And then they didn't realize it. They just thought he grabbed their keys so they stumbled, and he used like, you know, fishing knots and stuff. So they weren't about to get their shoes untied anytime soon and so he jumped in and went in the stretching room locked the door behind him you know did the old thing where you put the key in and you uh, bend it so it stays in there so you can't unlock it again and headed down and then he was on a journey he went down to like another level it was just offices uh, like office space like uh, cubicles they call it like where you don't get your own room you just have a desk with uh, some walls around it 
then he went down another level uh, and it was more offices. And he said, this is like a, not odd. I guess this is like a, some sort of off, like a office building that descends. Uh, then he'd go all the way down to the end of the hall. Uh, then he f- f- finally said, well, this isn't it. But he like did some, he, he's, you know, he's deducting. He said, well, he started to look at the pla- patterns on the floor and the traffic patterns and determined that there had to be some sort of hidden door behind a, one of the office bookshelves and went, found that door, went down another level. But it wasn't anything, it was a, it was a big cafeteria like you'd find in a school or a big workplace, uh, particularly in, in our time, like uh, the 1990s. And so he said, okay, well, it's like a cafeteria was shut down for the night. Uh, then he went past the cafeteria. Then again, he had to find like another, like he said, oh, okay, there's, why does this cafeteria have two sets of freezers? Of course, because one set of freezers is fake. It's just a pass-through room. Passed through that room, and then he found a dormitories, and he said, well, that's weird. There's dormitories. So this is for workers? Maybe workers, I'd say. And then he was in the dorms, and he could have sworn he saw singing. So he's running from dorm room to dorm room, listening. And he could have sworn he heard the song Step by Step. Uh, that's by uh, New Frogs on the Block. Uh, and he was like, wait a second, is that step by step? Uh, and he was running through his steps and finally he came in a room that looked like a kid's room or, or a, like a, it had some drawings on the walls and that stuff. Now, right as this was happening, we were in my basement of my house, uh, Billy, Vaughn, LJ, and I. And this was right when, like, like the last time I was telling you, we were playing this tape backwards, we were listening to it, and we were hearing, like, I say, uh, like, that we were supposed to, and then we said, we kept playing more and more, but eventually Billy's power battery, like, the battery was stuffed as elf as Billy's power, the battery ran out. And we were like, okay, wait a second, what was that song? We, we, the first few songs we knew, but then we were like, are these made-up songs? Like, there was something like, we said, okay, sense, a sensibility? Like, one sense as strong as, uh, like, and we were like, wait a second, uh, can't, sound, sense, sound, we, and uh, we were like, wait a second, I don't know. And then someone was like, no sound, size, sounds, sound, sounds. And we said, no, no sound, size, down. And then uh, Billy said, size, down. Uh, like, uh, like, uh, and, and she showed her, like, uh, the Bards and Bunnies thing. Like, this is, like, size, down, size, down. And we said, okay, but the no sound... Size down, no sound go, and then we said, then it's, then Vaughn said, wait a second, uh, uh, no sound, something, other than, so there was something in there about up and down, like in the silent tower. We said the silent tower, like remember the now the the, uh, the Southern Swamp trilogy, and then we tried to write our own adventure based on it. And then we said, oh, yeah, 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 that was what that tower that grew up and down. And it was not, it looked like it was uh, made by hand, the part that grew up, but it really was organic. And it had all, like, oh, yeah, that was, like, so ripe for building an adventure because you could go up and then you would discover at the top that you had to go all the way down. That was real adventure. And Vaughn said, though, that's where the silent realm was. Uh, and we kind of forgot. We said the silent realm. And Vaughn said, yeah, where the, the, they, like, the, the, there's something in there and a power, like uh, some sort of mysterious power. Remember, we didn't know if it was magic or other world power. But that in the lower world, you couldn't communicate by sound. Uh, the sound was amplified and decreased at the same time or something. 
And so you had to communicate. Remember, the, that was like the part of the, you guys didn't read the backstory I wrote? We said, oh, yeah, but can you refresh our memory? And Vaughn said, okay, like, uh, there was a, a, a wizard, again, that was the one who found the part going down. And the wizard tried to uh, uh, create the part going up. And when the wizard did that, uh, it, the wizard in all the wizard, the, the whole town, because the wizard was going to do it as a monument. This was a this was the humans back when there was humans. This is that myth, uh, and you know, as a, a tribute to humans and humanity, it was a human wizard. And then the all the the, the entire city and the wizard get, got sucked into the silent tower, and that became the soundless realm. And eventually, well, in my backstory. They learned to communicate through telepathy, but that was like, a, like that was one of the many stories I wrote. Okay, so what was your point, Vaughn? I said, and Vaughn said, "Well, that sounds like size down, go down. Like maybe it's like a." And then we looked at Billy and we said, "Is there a place like that?" And Billy kind of stared at us and kind of nodded, size down. Size down. And we said, okay, well, that's uh, odd. Uh, and then we said, well, how do we get there? How, how did they get there? Uh, we said, well, those weren't really, ant but, like, that's what Vaughn said. That's what I was writing the backstory for. We still didn't know where, like, the, the tower, one theory is that the tower is a single being. The other is that it's a collective being. Another thing was that it's a force, uh, uh, but it was definitely a living thing, like some sort of entity, and it had incredible power. And I said, well, it could have just been a power source. And, and Vaughn said, well, it was a por portal. Uh, remember in one of the books, it and we said, oh, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, those one of the portals was to the Silent Realm, and then LJ said, well, what if it's, uh, the, the, we, we could find, a, what if it's something like it's not, there's, there's no tower. It's before the wizard discovered it. Uh, and maybe it's a small something. Maybe it hasn't grown, size down. And we all said, huh, that's fine. And we said, what about, uh, what about that, Billy? Would, would we be, were we on to something? And Billy kind of looked at us and nodded again. And meanwhile, uh, while we were talking about this, uh, the, and then uh, Leon said, stopped hearing the singing after they had wandered in uh, to the one room that had that looked like it was a kid's room or a preteen's room. Uh, Leon said last heard the ha like singing down the hallway. Uh, Leon said found uh, through through a couple through a broom closet, of course, uh, and then passed. They said look, well, passed a bunch of brooms and all that, uh, and then a, a office that had tons of computer equipment. Then down a staircase and then a storage room. Uh, the chief eventually found this glowing spiral staircase leading down, further and further down. And the glowing felt so close, but always far away. Uh, and then eventually the, the leveled out. Uh, and then uh, Leon saw something glowing and, and went uh, towards it, uh, but then uh, heard something shuffling behind him. Uh, someone shuffling with uh, shoes that didn't have shoelaces, and then they sang. It was a, it was a, it was another frog, and it sang a, a famous bullfrog lullaby that put Leon right to sleep, and he fell right asleep. Uh, so that was odd. Now the next day. Uh, we were we were over at uh, Francis and Dari and Willow's house, and and Francis had spent most of the night on the couch trying to make sense of this album and paying the fine. And she was awoken by her, the arrival of her ex Lenny, who showed up, and Lenny said, "Hey, uh, 
I'm here to help. Uh, uh, here's some breakfast. Uh, ha- have some breakfast. And uh, Francis said, what are you doing here? Like, uh, I don't think we, like, we're re- really, uh, and uh, Lenny said, don't you know, like, uh, tomorrow's community resource day. So I thought I'd give you some support since the town's probably going to be pretty upset. I heard everything about the album and all of that. And I just wanted to help you get it all figured out uh, because everybody at town's going to be probably pretty and to have strong feelings about that. Uh, your daughter made an album making fun of the town and everybody in it and most people. Uh, and, uh, Francis was pretty like, she said, yeah, but I'm more concerned about Willow moving away and finding where Willow's live. Like why, like, uh, they still don't understand why Willow wouldn't at least keep in touch with me. And so I'm having feelings about that. You know, I'm trying to just reassess, uh, my parenting style and wonder where the communication or how I didn't create an opening, no, no open enough space uh, for Willow to be heard about her hopes and dreams. And Lenny said, well, that's why I'm here to help. Like, that's never been your strong suit. And Francis in her mind said, yes, it has. Uh, but I think it's good, Lenny said, that you're accepting that uh, yeah, maybe we have to f- figure out a way together to communicate and get in touch with Willow about her new career and her album. You know, so we'll figure it out together. We'll get in touch. And then Dari had woken up, uh, and Dari saw Lenny and rolled her eyes. And Lenny said, hey, Dari, can I talk to you? And, and uh, Dari said, what do you want? What are you doing here? And, and Lenny said, I'm here to help you and your mom. Uh, and Dari said, well, you have, you, you, you've helped a lot by not, you know, you're, and, and, and Lenny said, well, I'm here to help. Your mom needs help right now. And not eye rolling and uh, judgmental tones. And Dari said, Well, I got to get out of here anyway. I got stuff to do. And Lenny said, Well, it's Community Resource Day. It's, it's, so we all have to go to the Community Resource Day event. Um, and uh, she, she said, You got to be kidding me. And then Lenny said, Go in your room and get dressed for a Community Resource Day. I realized with all the hubbub, you forgot about it, but it's our most important day in our town. And we're going to be there to represent, and uh, it's a requirement, so I don't know what you want. Uh, and uh, I guess Dari said, yeah, I guess you're right. I do. It is a requirement of living in our town. And I'll explain that in a second. This is Willow telling you that. But uh, And then Lenny said, you know what, and, and take down these posters of these like uh, musicians you look up to. Especially that poster, that uh, otter, uh, like otter band. Uh, jug bands are for, because jug bands are for people that drink from jugs uh, and do the laundry outside. And Dari said, if you haven't looked, we do our laundry outside. Uh, and he said, well, don't drink from any jugs, is what I'm saying. So take down that poster. It glamorizes jug drinking. And Dari said they're playing the jug uh, as a musical instrument. It's a jug band. And he said, that's a waste of a wash tub. If you got to do your laundry outside, uh, uh, then for Lenny said, you got to drink from a jug to have an empty jug to play. So take that poster down and respect your mother and no more music in this home while I'm here. Uh, and, uh, uh, Dari said, okay, I guess. Now, meanwhile, all of us realized it was the next day. Like, last you left off with me and my friends, it was a night. But we all went home, and our parents all told us, tomorrow's, we realize you're down about your friend Will making fun of you and making fun of the town, but tomorrow is Community Resource Day, and we have these seasonally, and this, but it is not super important. But uh, anyway, so uh, oh, so so we all had to get ready for it. You have to wear your best clothes, and it's actually really uh, unfortunately normally it's a very upbeat event. But we did know that it was going to be really embarrassing because the songs 
even the song titles that everybody in town knew about each of us that Willow had written songs about or whoever wrote the album. They all really made fun of us, so it was really, really, really embarrassing and not something we were looking forward to, but normally you'd look forward to it. So the Community Resource Day, it's like a sim- so everybody in town comes, even people that don't live in town proper come, anybody that considers themselves a member of our community, and we live in a community-based uh we all contribute and we all, like, like, that's kind of the values of where we live. Everybody's a part of things and we're all interdependent and we all rely on one another. It's part of being in the swamp and, and living off the swamp. It's like uh, you have to prepare for winter and everyone has to work together. And that's even what our game Bards and Big Bunnies is about, like protecting community resources and sharing community resources. And Community Resource Day is kind of like one of the symbolic days where we remind ourselves of that. So it starts off pretty intense uh, because you go, like, there's a fair afterwards. I'll tell you about the fair first because that's the fun part. Uh, You know, there's rides, there's treats, there's games, there's music, there's laughter. You know, there's comedic performers, you know, there's shoe tying events and leaping events, dancing, everything you'd want as a kid and even as an adult. And everybody kind of lets loose. Uh, it's on a Friday, like if you go by the calendar that, it, like, maybe that I've learned about as a journalist. So then you celebrate on Friday, you don't have to go to work or school. Uh, but the first part of it is a little bit more serious and somber. That's why there's so much release afterwards. So every member of the community of every age, now if you're a little baby or something or a toddler, you can be escorted by uh, whoever is, uh, you know, whoever takes care of you. But every person, you get a symbolic acorn and you hold it in your hand and you wait in line Everyone's randomly chosen and called up, and everybody holds their acorn. You stand in front of the entire community, and you're next to what looks like an old tree, but it's not an old tree. It's a, it's actually a hidden underground storage thing. It's like a, a tree we made, and there's a hole in it, and, and it's like one of our backup acorn supplies, uh, and so you hold this acorn and then you drop it in the hole. But before that, you look at the town and you try to look as many people in the eye as possible. And you pause and then you sing. You take part in this singing, this community song, where you sing about some of the things you've consumed and benefited from the community. And you sing this song of thanks and gratitude. And then you sing a part of the song of an apology of like a really specific way you've not, uh, it's shorter than it sounds like I'm just explaining it, but it's really just a three part uh, short song. You know, though some people will sing longer like Babs last year, uh, sang forever and ever and ever. But so you you uh, you so you sing a second part, which is an apology of something you didn't do that you could have done, some choice you made that you remember. And again, this goes in. This is important. So like, yeah, if you don't do it, uh, you get like uh, you pretty much get unlimited tickets for everything at the fair if you do if you do this. And then if you don't, you get like a limited number of tickets. Uh, to spend on the rides and the games and the the treats and stuff. Also, it goes into your school. like So it has consequences. And it's more positive consequences. Like, it's more positive than negative. So you sing the apology, and then you sing what you're going to do differently uh, that you've learned, uh, so what change you're going to make, and then you drop your acorn. And everybody does it, and... Uh, You know, so basically you say, thank you, I'm sorry, and I promise to do better. 
Uh, and it's very, very powerful and very fun, but it's also fun for the kids, you know, because we kind of laugh at one another. But we all went, all of us, uh, we saw each other. I guess we were supposed to have heavy hearts, but we knew that Willow's album was not real. Uh, so it was only kind of embarrassing. But we more thought about it like uh, the other people who had been mentioned in the song. So when we went to the community resource and someone would go up on stage, sometimes we would start laughing. And we'd see other people laughing uh, because you say, oh, that was, so they were in Willow's song. Uh, you know, about, uh, you know, the, the, the whiskers or, uh, you know, whatever, the way they, you know, they, they eat their carrots or something. I don't know. So we were kind of having a good time, but we were getting shushed because we were supposed to be serious. But we were also getting a lot of looks uh, and uncomfortable looks from people, but not as many as uh, Dari, Francis, and Lenny. You know, Lenny was more of a distant person, so... But meanwhile, Frances was standing there, and she was listening to the singing, and she was thinking about Willow. And she was kind of like a, a little bit uh, gone like gone in her mind, like thinking about memories. So she wasn't really feeling all the hard looks she was getting from everybody in town. Uh, because I'm sure people thought it was just kind of hanging over her head uh, and that she should be embarrassed. And Dari was not, oh, yeah, I'll tell you about what was, uh, Francis was thinking about, but Dari was more, she would stare people right back that were staring at her until they looked away. Dari was not going to back down. Like, Dari was like, you got to be kidding me, right? Like, uh, you're not going to, like, judge me and my mom for my sister starting an album, uh, and moving away. Like, uh, we've worked very hard, and, uh, um, and she was also also in the back of her mind still thinking more about Babs uh, because her and Tefe were supposed to figure out where Babs was. And uh, because so Babs, they had gone to visit Lenny to see if Willow was at Lenny's, which Willow was not. Then Dari came out and Babs and Tefe were kissing. Uh, they went uh, to like they started driving home. Dari drove home, then she was so irritated that she got out of the car. And then Teffy got out of the car to apologize to Dari. They came back and Babs was gone. They thought Babs went home. And meanwhile, they uh, figured out recently that no, Babs didn't go home. She was somewhere and possibly again, unbeknownst to us or to even Leon, Babs and Tefe were looking to the fact that maybe uh, Babs had gone with a big bunny. And if Babs had, uh, in the back of Dari's mind, she said, maybe Willow has too. And this big bunny is uh, has some part in all of this. Uh, so that's where, so she was mostly just glaring at people and saying, who are you? Like, uh, like, everybody's got to cast their acorn anyway. You know, none of us are perfect. And I think, actually, her glaring, because it was unspoken, actually, maybe before people went up there, put in their mind, and some people actually said sorry, like, uh, and apologized in their songs, uh, not directly to Dari and Francis, but in a way that was clear. Uh, but probably not, you know, she should have just said, she's sorry for just like judging you, Dari and Francis. I know it's not easy and, uh, we're not perfect. Now, the other thing was, uh, so uh, Francis, so Francis was kind of staring off and she was remembering like a good times with Willow and Willow's, because so Willow had gone through this phase of writing Bards and Bunny, uh, parody music, uh, because there was like uh, these two uh, like uh, artists or groups of artists like uh, that put put out this one album together, uh, the Double Clicks and Judy Tenuta, uh, and they had put out a Bards and Bunnies like an album, and, and so like uh, Willow had been writing a lot of uh, Bards and Bunny parody songs of like some of her heroines. 
And she was kind of singing it at the table for her mom. Uh, and uh, Francis said, well, geez, that sounds like an intense song. It's kind of got some edge, uh, Willow. You're just a kid. Why would you be singing about uh, uh, Bad Bards was the name of the song. Bad, 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 bad bards. And she said, doesn't it sound like that's like magic? And uh, like uh, the, she was, I'm not comfortable with my daughter singing that kind of stuff. And Willow said, Mom, like, uh, sometimes, like, not all magic is good, and not people, not everybody uses magical powers or any powers or community resource powers for good. And, you know, Francis was a knowing person, so she said, I know, I know, you're right. Uh, and she goes, so some, even the bards, sometimes there's bad, bad bards. It's better we know about the bad bards and, uh, you know, the, those bards could be good singers. Uh, and she said, holy cow, you're right. Uh, you're right. Like, uh, but she goes, maybe make the bad, bad. She goes, what about bad, 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 Brad Bard? And uh, then Francis said, uh, and then Willow said, that might be too many. But like, but, but she goes, it's not supposed to be a tw tongue twister, mom. It's supposed to be a, a song. So that was what was happening with, uh, uh, with, 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 uh, Francis and Dari. Now, the, eventually this ceremony ended and we all took our turns and then the, the, the celebration started, but we were actually distracted. We d were not interested for the first time ever in the rides or the games or any of that stuff. We were just thinking about, uh, this puzzle, this odd puzzle we were trying to solve of where was Willow. And we knew our favorite moose uh, professor would uh, could help us. So, so we sat down at the cider where we had, you could have cider and go nuts, uh, go nuts and cider. And uh, we sat down at the table and we said, listen, uh, we want to talk to you. And the professor said, okay, what do you want to talk about? And then Vaughn said, mind reading. And uh, uh, said, okay, well, you know, if I could read your minds, I know it wouldn't be easy. You know, if my friend put out a album goofing on me in the town. Uh, so, yeah, and I know, like, uh, you don't have to be a mind reader to figure that out. But you might be w wondering what the rest of the town's thinking and wishing they could read their minds. And I'm sure they've all had at times, maybe it more reminds them of the times uh, their friends picked on them. And they, we said, no, 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 no. We're thinking, is, could you, is telepathy real? And the uh, professor said, well, yeah, uh, it's possible. Uh, uh, it's possible, but it's not provable. Uh, to communicate by thought, uh, you know, there's the whole idea of extrasensory perception. And the professor went in this long talk where we almost like dozing off about, uh, well, just using to strength ways you could strengthen your senses or people that are dependent on, uh, one sense, uh, because, uh, they, they've developed a skill with one sense because they've needed to develop a stronger use of one sense over the other. And uh, we said, well, okay, so you could, it's possible. And the professor said, well, if you could communicate, if it was a sense that we knew about, uh, but right now, you know, these are the senses we have, you know, sight, sound, and those kind of things. We said, well, what would it take uh, to do that? And uh, said, uh, something magical, I guess, or, you know, something as magic as evolution, but that takes a long time. And then we talked about the myth of humans and, uh, you know, that they weren't very good caretakers of the swamp or any place and that... Uh, uh, we needed to like evolve to be more community based. Uh, like uh, those are some of the myths that, that we're not taught, but that we hear about, so that things could flourish. Uh, like how we evolved uh, to be a community that's trying to flourish and help one another flourish. 
And then we said, oh, okay, well, uh, what about like, uh, is there like a, a, a tower? Uh, do, do you know anything about the, so, like, that if uh, uh, something could grow, uh, like an organic tower that could grow down and up at the same time? Uh, like, uh, like that's, and you could go inside of it, uh, and like, uh, like the Southern swamp is like, and the professor said, you mean like a tree, like that, like an organic thing that goes down and up, uh, and that things to live in. And we said, well, what if, uh, well, not just a tree. Uh, that's pretty funny professor, but we're talking about like in the, like, uh, and it was a silent tower. Remember the silent tower? And then the professor, of course, was playing us and said, yeah, you know, oh, yeah, the one where the wizard found the, the, the hole, the, the, the tunnel that went down. And it was a being and then forced it to grow. And then, yeah. Uh, and they said, we said, well, how would you find something like that? Uh, and the professor said, well, uh, like, how would you find something in the earth? Uh, and we said, well, what about a, a silent realm? Uh, the, the, that was the other thing. And the professor said, but uh, maybe he didn't read closely enough that uh, even the communicating by telepathy was putting off a vibration. And we said, what? And the professor said, you didn't read the novella about like a... Uh, and uh, we said, well, if there was a vibration from a soundless realm, how would you find it? Uh, and we, the professor said, okay, well, let me tell you this other metaphor. Like, uh, there's a, a place uh, that's not like the swamp. Uh, there's places that are known as uh, deserts uh, and places that are arid. And remember, we were talking about this in class. And we said, yeah, yeah, we kind of remember. And he said, okay, well, one of the ideas is to find water. And he goes, and it's very similar. Is uh, divining, right? Uh, isn't that one of the things you can do in bards and bunnies? Uh, and he said, uh, you search for water uh, and you try to find, and we said, well, you're losing us, professor. And then the professor kind of, just, it was like uh, the professor kind of, I think the professor just slowly fell asleep to his own kind of talking. And then we said, well, let's rest here at the table and get some sleep too. And then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll figure out what we're going to do next. Uh, so we will put our heads down, even though everybody else was enjoying the community resource fair and took a little nap. Good night. All right. I want to thank everybody who reviewed the show recently on Apple podcasts. Uh, Oh, the, the Shay says, uh, school scoots rock from Canada says scoots rocks, the safe place, uh, get, took a few tries. Uh, but if it feels like a, a dear trusted friend for over a year, grateful for the many ways to create a safe place, intentional and generous, uh, puts me asleep, uh, sometimes keeps me company. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Shay for that very, very be beautiful and touching review. Uh, Agent S uh, says, uh, W-A-R-N-I-N-G, podcast may cause you to be drowsy. Uh, as someone who's dealt with fragmented sleep most of my adult life, naturally I was skeptical. It took me some time to find out uh, how to make the podcast work for me. I don't usually fall asleep to it. Rather, it keeps me company and helps me pass the time when I can't get back to sleep, making the night less lonely. Uh, some episodes are entertaining, while others are like listening to a clothes dryer, which is a good thing. Thanks, uh, Agent S. Uh, Dar2 from the Netherlands says, says uh, a wonderful little lifesaver. It helps relax my mind. Scoots does a trick. Yeah, there's somebody that doesn't like uh, the podcast. Then Snoreway says doesn't work for everyone. It took me a bit to find this podcast. I was avoiding it because it popped up so much, but it works wonders. Uh, perfect balance of intention, get, grabbing, and boring. Keep it up. Uh, Lulu0118, uh, exclamation, says, love, love, love. Been listening for years. Love the tangents, and it goes on. Thanks. Uh, 
diamond uh, footprints it says uh, great content but uh, intros are getting longer and longer they don't like the ads uh they can't relax to 20 minutes of ads, uh, which uh, so I guess maybe they're not listening to the, um, um, I don't know, actually listening to the intros. Or you could support the show on Patreon, uh, five, just $5 a month to get ad free episodes. Uh, Derp59 uh, uh, says, uh, Helps you get to sleep. At first, I did not enjoy this podcast. I thought it was going to magically put you to sleep, but it doesn't. Uh, and that's okay, because he's there for you to fall asleep. Uh, KRFM88, what's this magic? Don't know how Scoots does it, but the podcast is always magic. Uh, it gets uh, funny. You get funny looks when you mention it to noobs, but they come back saying how it worked. Uh, Definitely give it a chance. It works well to entertain you and relax you for sleep. I love the episodes that are intro only. I rarely make it past 15. And then Ali from Australia says, Best thing ever to fall asleep. Uh, as expected for reading and reviews. Took me a couple of listens to get the gist of it, and then it sent me off to a sleepy head space. Uh, thanks. Thanks, everybody, for reviewing the show. Uh, Sleeping with Gross is a podcast for free by people sharing their, their natural experience with the show in person and online. And then uh, we exist as a free podcast because people that support the show directly on Patreon or support our sponsors. So thank you, everybody that does both those things. Uh, and that's it. Uh, w- oh, there's one more thing. Uh, there's, here's something I want you to know about. 